All right, guys, so I've had quite a few people ask me what storage option should they select for their new M1 Max? Now, as you guys have come to appreciate from me, I just get straight to the point, and my answer is the 256 gigabyte hard drive is more than enough for 95% of people, and you should only choose to upgrade to the 500 plus gigabyte models only if you need to install many, many apps and those apps also require files on the internal hard drive of the Mac. So if that doesn't apply to you guys, which is like 95% of people, save your money, just get the 256 gigabyte base model and instead spend your extra money or your extra budget on things like the RAM, because I always recommend not spending money on the super, super expensive SSD storage on the Macs. They are really, really expensive. They're a bit of a ripoff in my opinion. And if you can, you should always go for either the RAM or upgrading the processor first of all. So if that means going from an eight gigabyte version to a 16 gigabyte version, or going from a 16 gigabyte MacBook Air to an entry level MacBook Pro, that's always, always, always a better upgrade than spending two or $300 on more storage. Because as I'm about to show you, this is my personal machine. It's a 256 gigabyte base model. I have no issues and I can expand this storage as much as I want. At the moment, I have it expanded up to one terabyte and I'll show you the exact SSD drive I'm using to do that in just a second. But what we'll do first of all is I'll dive straight into the computer and I'll share my screen and I'll show you exactly how much storage and how the storage is allocated on my machine. The best strategy is to get a storage option that can hold all of your applications and programs. And for any large files like footage or photos, put them on an external SSD or hard drive. And as you can see, I'm barely using any of the onboard storage on the Mac. Now, I will just take a moment to note that I don't actually have any personal files on this machine. Just because I'm spending so much time recording the screen and doing YouTube videos, it's gonna be a pain in the ass if I have to blur all my personal stuff. So I don't have any personal files, but typically my usage scenario for these machines is I'll have about 30 to 40 gigabytes of personal files, and that's Word documents, PDFs, PowerPoint, Excel spreadsheets, receipts, videos, photos, all that kind of stuff. But I generally run it pretty light. I only have about, as I said before, 30 to 40 gigabytes because this is a laptop it's generally not your primary workstation. If it is, and you're spending a lot of time on this machine as your primary workstation, yeah, maybe consider going up to the 500 gigabyte model, but again, only after you've upgraded everything else that you possibly can. So if we go into this in a little bit more detail, you can see I have almost 30 gigabytes of applications. Now, generally I won't have this many apps, but again, this is a testing machine. So I have pretty much every app I can think of. Documents, again, don't have a whole lot there, like I explained just before. System, that's the operating system and things that you can't really access and delete. That's the actual Mac OS Big Sur. And then we, here we have the other folder. Now, if you guys have a really big other folder, there might be an actual issue with your Mac. So I'll leave a link in the top right-hand corner to a video I made a while ago showing you how to potentially clear that up. But essentially the other folder is things like caches, temporary system files, I know when I installed Fortnite through Epic Games, it put Fortnite there and I had like 100 gigabytes of other storage and that was just Fortnite. So just be aware of what exactly can and can't go into the other folder. Now, if we come here into manage, I'll give you a bit of a further breakdown. So you can see here the applications that I have and I have quite a few applications, like I said before, and they're ranked here from largest to smallest. So as a rule of thumb, your Adobe suite is gonna take up by far the most room. So you can see here, I have all the big ones. I have Premiere Pro, uh, Photoshop, After Effects, and they're about two or three gigabytes each. And then the Microsoft Office suite and your editing programs are gonna be quite large as well. So we've got Word, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, about a gig to two gigs each. Uh, editing programs like Resolve, that's always gonna be between two to five gigabytes. And all the other miscellaneous things down here, like Google Chrome, uh, Spotify, OBS, they're all gonna be about 250 to 500 megabytes. And if we scroll down the list, you can see all of these smaller apps. They don't really take much room at all. Like you can squeeze a whole lot onto this hard drive. Um, but again, like I've got 
you know, 100, almost 180 gigabytes free. Uh, so let's say, for example, I have 50 gigabytes of personal data. That's still 120 gigabytes free on the hard drive. I always do recommend leaving about 10% of the hard drive free at all times for performance reasons, but that still leaves you with about 100 to 110 gigabytes of free space, which I think is more than enough for most people. Now, what about video editing or photo editing and all that good stuff? Well, the answer is you wanna get yourself an external SSD hard drive. They are quite cheap. I personally have a one terabyte Samsung T5 SSD or solid state drive, and they're actually quite cheap and cost effective these days. I will leave some links in the description and also pinned in the top comment. I definitely, definitely do recommend going out and picking up at least a one terabyte version, but if you can stretch a budget, get the two terabyte version because that's gonna give you a heap of storage and headroom, and that's gonna pretty much have you set up. So if I actually plug in my T5, I'll show you what that looks like, and I'll show you that you can actually edit and do photo manipulation and stuff off the hard drive directly. Now remember guys, it is an SSD, a solid state drive. So you're gonna be getting up to 500 megabytes per second transfer rate. Now it's not gonna be quite as quick as that on this particular Mac. You're probably gonna be getting around two to 300, maybe 400. We will do a test in a second to test that out, but it's gonna be more than enough for all your editing, rendering, photo needs, without a doubt. So let's close this down. Let's come into the Finder and let's open up the Samsung T5. And you can see here, I've got about 750 gigabytes free. Um, I've already got quite a lot on here. Okay guys, so what we'll do first is we'll open up DaVinci Resolve and I'll actually be importing footage, some 4K footage from my Sony A7 Mark III from the Samsung T5 directly into DaVinci Resolve. And I'll show you that you can just play back in real time, render, add effects, all that kind of stuff without any issues or speed issues. So let's create a new project. Let's go to the media tab. Let's go to the T5. Let's go to some test footage. Let's drag this into the media pool. We'll change the frame rate. So you can see enters straight away and if we scrub, scrubs without any issues. And now if we go onto the timeline, we can drag all of this on and we can play that back. And that will play in real time. As you can see here, there's not a whole lot of motion in these clips. Let me try and find one that does. So as you can see there guys, this is in 4K. It is playing in real time. There's absolutely no issues. If I wanted to add effects and that kind of thing, it would work as well. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I just want to show you that it will work perfectly fine. Now, what about the transfer speed from this particular SSD? So let's say, for example, you are dragging folders and files from the Mac to the SSD or vice versa. Let's just have a look. Now, I've got quite a large folder here. So this is all of my rendered out videos for the last, I'm gonna say, week, and that's 100 gigabytes. So I might actually just take 10 videos or so, and let's just do, let's just do six videos, and let's see how quickly these will transfer. So as you can see, they're going very, very quickly doesn't have the exact transfer rate, unfortunately, like Windows does, but I'm sure you guys can work it out. It's probably gonna be about three to 400 megabytes per second. Um, but again, like this is a 23 gigabyte transfer, and this is happening very, very quickly. So there you go, guys. It's about a minute to transfer those files over. So if we look at this folder now, that is 23 gigabytes. So now if we actually go and drag this folder back onto the T5 SSD, you'll see how quickly this copies over as well. So pretty much the exact same, about a minute. Uh, you're really gonna have no issues with this particular drive or any drive for that matter. You don't exactly need to get the T5, although I do recommend it. 
So guys, I hope that shed some light on the storage situation on the new Macs. Like I said before, you definitely don't need anything more than a 256 gigabyte version, unless A, you have the money, or B, you really do need that extra storage for some reason. But like I said in the video, just go to your local technology store, or Amazon, pick up an external SSD, and you can just instantly triple, quadruple, or six tuple your storage up to several terabytes just by picking up some cheap SSD drives. But as we saw from that test on DaVinci Resolve and also the transferring, you're gonna have absolutely no issues because the read and write speed of your average SSD is very, very quick. So that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.